Welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane. And I'm Jen. And we are the Yambors. And this is the second episode of the pregnancy series. We just found out recently that we are having a baby. Yes. And this is the second episode about changes. Let's get into it. We're pregnant. We're pregnant. We are having a baby. So changes. I mean, there's a lot of changes that have happened. I mean, we got this news not even a month ago. Three weeks ago. Three exactly. weeks ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so much has changed from our mindset to the way your body is changing, the mm -hmm. way that you can't eat certain things, you yeah. can't do certain things. There's a lot of changes that are happening and it's happening so quickly. So we wanted to dive into having a whole conversation about the changes of yeah. this first trimester and throughout the entire pregnancy, but what's right. happening so far between you, between mm -hmm. us in our relationship, yeah, and just having a thorough, authentic conversation about yeah. the changes. So there has definitely been quite a few changes since the news broke, obviously, and we found out that we're going to be parents. Initially, I would say it was the physical changes because it was like as soon as my body like confirmed that I'm prego, uh, you know, the food aversion, the morning sickness, the nausea on those physical sy symptoms, um, breast soreness, things like that, um, all kind of just like hit me at once. Um, I didn't think that I would necessarily feel the changes of all the hormones that are being, you know, my body's producing to prepare for a baby, but I've been experiencing symptoms with that as well, just noticing how my mood and my behavior has changed a little bit. And so um, that in itself has also affected me mentally as well. You know, there are moments where, you know, you're thinking like a mom now and your your psyche has changed. But then also you have moments where you can have a good day or you can have a really bad day and you don't really know like how it shifted. And it's just like trying to like find a balance with all of these hormones and things like that. So I would say for sure, those were something, some of the things that I noticed um, early on, like I think I've mentioned this in the first episode, I have no desire to eat any meat. Like I've tried <laughs> yeah, and that, it's just not I it. Am, <laughs> I am trying to get her to eat some protein, some authentic protein, some chicken and some other types of meat. None of and it, fish, nothing. I just, I'm repulsed by it. <laughs> I bought a whole rotisserie chicken and you were like, why did you buy that chicken? You're not even eating it. I was like, because I thought I was going to. What are you like? Well, why don't you just pull out a piece of chicken breast? I ate the whole I ate the whole thing. But and also in the first episode talking about the hormones. Yeah. This girl cried over a DiGiorno pizza. I did. <laughs> I cried over <laughs> it, If you didn't see the first episode, go back and watch the first episode. But that's when I knew the hormones were going through the roof because she cried over a DiGiorno pizza. In bed. Salty. In bed because it didn't pan out the way that she thought. So if you haven't seen that episode, go check that out. Um, but that's when I realized, wow, like the yeah. hormones and the changes in her mentality is just <laughs> uh it's uh interesting but yeah. i think what would you say the biggest change that you have ex experienced so far um i would say obviously like the biggest change would just be the physical symptoms because mm -hmm. you know i can smell so i can be fine in this like our neighbors next door love to fry fish like once a week and i smell that and i'm you know i get instantly <laughs> nauseous i'm yeah. just like oh no the funny thing is you were you were doing pescatarian before yeah so i was eating like only like fish and shellfish and i love i like love fried fish like it's so good yeah you yeah but the smell of it now is just like oh no not again like i would eat tuna salad all that stuff right. and i can't even like seeing a can of tuna i'm just like oh dear god where's the nearest <laughs> bucket like I, <laughs> oh, so, dear god. so i would say definitely um, like the physical symptoms right. but um outside of that I would also say just um, the mindset shift a little bit too. Like mm. me thinking like, okay, it's no longer about just me and Shane. I need to start thinking like in preparation of a baby right. and like what is safe for the baby? What isn't safe for the baby? What is safe for me and the baby? Like, can I eat this? It's can funny I drink this? Can, right. You know, it's like those little things. So I would say that for sure has right. been one of the... You hit mommy things. mode real quick. Yeah. 
yeah. I, I, I would say that from the people that we know, friends, family that have kids, like that mommy mode kicks in immediately. Yeah. Like as soon as you get the news and you're in pregnancy preparation, mm-hmm. and obviously when you have the baby, yeah. like your whole mindset switches and now it's not just about you. It's not yeah. just about your relationship or your marriage. It's also mm-hmm. about this other little human that you're raising and that you yeah. want to have build the best life for them. And mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty incredible. Like I would say the genuine love and unconditional love that you have for, for a baby that isn't even born yet. Yeah. And that's just how the human mind works. Like this is how, This is our seed. This is something that we are birthing and that we are grooming and we're going to continue to build to be hopefully the best human and best person that they can be. And we take a lot of pride in that, a lot of a lot of dignity in that. So from the very beginning, we want to make sure that we're doing all the right things and and making sure this baby is healthy Mm -hmm. so that they can prosper and do go on to do good and do good things. great things yeah. um yeah for sure and i think that like you said it is just something that is innate that happens and you just automatically want to protect right. what's there and you want to nurture it and you want to do the right things so that you know the child can grow up healthy and, and happy and you know just live a very fruitful life yeah um if you you know if we're speaking very candidly another thing that that's um, what we do I noticed that has changed and we actually had a conversation about this earlier, but just like a change in our marriage as well. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a bad thing. It's just right now since, you know, I'm still trying to navigate with all the physical changes, the mental changes. And, you know, it's, it's known that in the first trimester, like things are very unpredictable. That's like, I believe that the highest chance where a woman is likely to have a miscarriage or mm-hmm. stillbirth and things like that. And so, um, with our doctor first doctor's appointment coming up with it, us not actually having it yet, that has been causing me some anxiety because I want to make sure everything is okay. Right. And you know, I just have that fear of like, okay, I just need to get to the first doctor's appointment we can get the sonogram we can get you know we can see how the baby is doing and then that will give me some peace of mind but with that it has put our marriage a little bit on the back burner when it comes to just more like quality time and and intimacy and things like that because I'm either tired nauseous or you know just not in a good space mentally where I have a lot going on and you know maybe it was a rough day with nausea and all that stuff and I'm just not feeling good on top of work my work schedule is extremely busy and so sometimes that uh, that has put our time on the back burner and I appreciate you being so patient because I understand that you matter too and our marriage matters and you have to make time for that as well and though we spend time, we're not spending the time that we're used to spending with each other yeah. and having that level of intimacy and things like that because of just this news. But I know that once I just get to the doctor's appointment and I know that everything's good, I think that will relieve some some stress for right. me and anxiety. Yeah, and I'm glad that you touched on that because it is true. And I think this, like you said, a candid conversation about what we're going through and what a lot of people go through as far as that first month, two months, three months of pregnancy yeah, and definitely within a relationship. And I think we understand and I understand that the baby is a priority right now, but Mm -hmm. we also, we also have to always know that our marriage is a priority. Of course. Yeah. We have to make sure that we're doing the best that we can on both ends, both parts to nurture both, you know? Um, if our marriage isn't good, how are we going to be good parents to the child? Not to say that you can't be a good parent, but it makes parenting easier and a little bit better, of course. And you, you know, we want to make sure that the health of our marriage is there too. So a hundred percent. And that kind of, that kind of made me think of like how cohesive we like, we have to work as a team, as a team, we have to work as a team. And that's not that's not a change that's more so like what we do like we we always work as a team Mm -hmm. but now the change is really figuring out this new element this huge element to our lives which is raising a child yeah like how are we going to work as a team 
with doing that. Right. Like we can always work as a team, just me and you and mm-hmm. figuring out things and figuring out life and finances and, and quality time and mm-hmm. every aspect of just building a good relationship and right. a, a, a good life. But now a good life with a child. Right. Like a good life with a dog is one thing. A good life with a child is like, all right, now we got to figure that out. But that's a part of the journey. Like we got to enjoy the journey. And to alleviate some of the pressure that you feel for this first appointment, it's also just enjoy the journey. Like don't don't think so much about like, ah, I just want to get through this first appointment and see what happens. Like Whatever God's will is, is what God's will is. And we'll figure out whatever, whatever happens, you know, and very true. And now that you've actually said that, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So we've already, the shock has settled from us knowing that we're having a child. Right. And now kind of, kind of, yeah, kind (laughs) of. (laughs) It's like, wow, we have a kid. Wow. That's crazy. But we're now starting to be more like in prep mode and things like that. Um, how are you feeling knowing that you're going to be a dad? Man, I mean, it's still a shock. Yeah. It's still a shock. I'm still like, wow, I'm actually going to be a father. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's an incredible blessing to be having a child with the woman of my dreams. Oh. <laughs> and I think this is what, and we, we mentioned this in the first episode that we didn't plan for a baby. Yeah. And that's always a little scary because that's not what you were planning for. Yeah. You, I mean, you know, it's not what you had. That's not what you had in your plans. Yeah. But the incredible blessing is that I'm having it with the person that I want to have it with. Yeah. And that I love to death and that is my wife. And I know that we can be able to raise such an incredible child and we have so much knowledge and wisdom and love to share mm-hmm. with this child. and. Mm-hmm. This child will grow up knowing and seeing firsthand what true love is. Yeah. And I find that so exciting. Yeah. That they're going to grow up, boy or girl, we don't know yet. They're going to see true love and they're going to witness it. And that's something that we didn't have so much growing up. And for us to be a two parent household and to be able to give to this child the way that wasn't truly given to us. Yeah. Yeah is going to be a blessing. And that's the way that I look at it from me being a father standpoint is like, I want to be there for the child as a father because I didn't have a father growing up. Mm -hmm. But also I want to, I want them to see and and realize what true love is and what a good mother and a good father is. And that's why it's really exciting at the same time, even Mm -hmm. though it wasn't planned and not something that we were hoping for. Mm -hmm. um, But now that it's here, it's like, all right, I'm going to show you what a good father is. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah. Like, I, I'm going to take pride in that. Yeah. I'm a, like, it's, I don't know if, it, if it's the ego thing. I don't know. But I, I know I'm going to be a good father because I need to be a good father and I want to be a good yeah. father. And so overall, I would say I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited and ready. Yeah. To a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's like you're never really like ready until the baby's like, right, right, like right. oh, well, I can't turn back now. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. That's very exciting to hear. So let me ask you mm-hmm. the same question. How do you feel about being a future mother? I am scared. <laughs> um, I'm a little scared because. You know, you can read all the books, you can buy all the stuff, but that doesn't fully prepare you for motherhood, I feel like. Mm. You have to just be in it to experience it. And so I'm a little scared, you know, because it's not easy. What moms do, like, they don't get enough credit. And just me being an auntie is exhausting, so I can't imagine, like, you Uh know, well... I'm saying I can't imagine. Well, you can't imagine because (laughs) it's happening. (laughs) Um, You know, being a mom is a whole nother level. Right. Um, So, yeah, I'm a little scared, but I'm also very excited as well. Like you said, um, I feel the same way. You know, we weren't planning to have a baby. So I think because we weren't planning, we didn't like there's a certain level of confidence i think that you have when you are planning for something and it goes as planned as like yes okay i feel prepared i feel equipped 
you know, because this is right. something that we've been gearing up for. And we didn't necessarily do that per se, but I am still, I'm very excited. Um, I'm super hopeful for what this new chapter will bring. And um, I know that I'm going to be a good mom. I do think that, I hope that during the course of this nine months, there are some behaviors that I unlearn. Um, I also hope that I learn a lot of things that will prepare me for, you know, our child. And I think my biggest fear is projecting some of the childhood trauma that I have onto my child. But I don't think that's going to happen. But you know how sometimes in your head you just like, you always like, I want to give my child what I didn't have or this, this, and that. I don't want them to grow up the way that I did. Right, kind of so, like what I said. Yeah, and so, um, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to raising a child and being able to give them all of the experiences that I didn't get to have as a child. Yeah. Um, but not necessarily doing it where I'm living through that child. I want it to be oh, yeah. new experiences and just being able to show them just – so many new things and right. things that we weren't able necessarily exposed to. Um, I don't think I said it as beautifully as you said, but you know, that's, that's how I'm feeling. I feel like I'm kind of like, I'm excited. I'm scared. I'm nervous. Um, I'm very hopeful for the future. I just want a very healthy baby and motherhood is going to be something that is very foreign to me. This is a new chapter and I'm so grateful that I have sisters that I can rely on and cousins that that have children that can share a blueprint with me. Um, so it's not like I'm going into this thing necessarily blind. And we have a super supportive family, even though they don't know yet. Um, yeah, they don't know. They yet. don't know yet as of now. As of but the recording this, of this video. Yeah, but when we air it, they'll obviously know. Yeah. But, um, you know, we have we'll have a very supportive family and have a tribe of people that will ensure that we got this and we'll make sure that we we got this so um yeah i am excited i'm excited for motherhood i am nervous for motherhood <laughs> I'm a little scared because it's different from you know having a little dog over here and then actually having a baby so i don't um, know if she's in frame but maybe she might be in frame i don't know uh, well, Just regardless. Me petting a dog yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about having a child with me? So, I never had any doubt when it came to that because you have shown me through the years the example of how a man should support his woman, how a husband should be there for his wife thus far. You know, we, we're going into three years of marriage, and I never have any doubts because it's not only what you say, but it's your actions that show me day in and day out that you're going to be an amazing father. And I know that you are going to love this child to the ends of the earth. You're probably going to drill a little bit of basketball in there, I'm girl or to. boy. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. Um, but no, the love that you are going to have for this child and the security that we'll have, I know that, you know, you are you are the perfect person for that and I'm in great hands you know what I mean like there's I have no doubt there like that's something that didn't even cross my mind you know it's just like this is a person that I am supposed to continue to do life with and doing life with obviously means that we're expanding I'm excited for this new chapter I'm excited to see you as a father mm. um especially someone who necessarily didn't you know didn't have a father growing up to see you be able to turn that around and be the best father you can be to our child that's going to be amazing yeah and our child is never going to have to grow up thinking that or right. experiencing is experiencing that and yeah i think you're going to do phenomenally and i'm excited to see that from my perspective as well to see you in daddy mode and see you you know just in a in a different light so that's going to be very cool well i appreciate that mm -hmm. I, I definitely do that that means a lot to me and your words are really powerful and i think the words that we speak to each other are extremely powerful yeah we have to continue to breathe 
enlightening, insightful, positive, loving, truly loving words Mm -hmm. to each other, continue to encourage each other through this process of pregnancy, but just in life in general and just in a healthy relationship, like breathing good encouragement to each other and your words of saying that you know that you're in good hands yeah and you just feel that security and that comfort with knowing that your child is a product of me and that you're happy that i am the one that you're having a child with that means the world to me yeah and i take pride in that and i will take pride in that for ever so it's about these type of conversations that yeah. really breathe just incredible light on our relationship mm-hmm. and just strengthen it even more yeah. because we encourage each other. But this is just not even just encouragement for us, but hoping that couples in other marriages can get some value and some mm-hmm. insight from the conversations that we have to share, to share like, what true love really is. And this is an incredible, beautiful blessing that we get to share now with, uh, between us and now with whoever is wants to watch or listen because pregnancy and having a baby is one of the most incredible blessings that you can have in this life. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily something that we plan for and that we wanted all along, but now that it's here, it's like, okay, now, we, we, we turn the page, we turn the chapter and we yeah. say, this is a new chapter and we're going to start it and we're going to do it confidently and we're going to do it together and we're going to be on the same page and breathe encouragement along the way. Yeah. And us continuing to do that not only helps us, but it helps other relationships and it helps other couples and yeah. marriages. And this is what we're doing. So thank you for those words. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope and that thank you, you. Yeah. And I know that you appreciated the words that I said. And these are just the changes that are that we're experiencing mm-hmm. in this first month of being pregnant. Yeah. And that's going to continue. We got eight more bus of this. Yeah, we sure do. And with that said, I would definitely say cheers to a new chapter. Mike, cheers. Yep, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, cheers uh, to a new chapter. Cheers to new changes. Uh-huh. Cheers to breaking generational curses. Mm. Cheers to us becoming Mm. just constantly becoming and evolving and with that said we're gonna sign off for today we're gonna sign off my (laughs) name is shane and i'm jen and this is the yambors bye guys enjoy the journey